Good uh, morning to all of you. So we have uh, one international student that uh, registered uh, this week. So uh, the class will be delivered in uh, English medium. Okay. And uh, so this class will be recorded. And for those who have maybe internet stability, you can always refer to my YouTube channel uh, where we can, I will actually upload um, this video once this video is prepared. Okay. So without further ado, um, oh, okay. Just to um, one announcement. Okay. So actually um, about COVID-19, this is actually uh, in, just an internal circulation, okay? Just for your internal uh, information that uh, currently most of us are working from home because uh, last week, one of our postgraduate students uh, is uh, diagnosed uh, as a positive, okay? And he didn't have any symptoms with him. He only realized that he is a positive when he want to go back to Pakistan because he's a PhD student. He want to go back to Pakistan, so he need to do the swab test. But suddenly he is positive without any symptoms. Okay, so he's also surprised. So most of us are right now self quarantine. And uh, most likely all the labs, especially power electronics lab, because he working there, is actually um, uh, will be sanitized, I think today. Okay, so just precaution. So, so this COVID, I don't know when and uh, how it will be, um, what I call end. Okay. So the most dangerous part is actually where they, the, the patient itself, they, he didn't have any symptoms. That is the problem. Okay. So, uh, so we pray to our God so that, uh, inshallah, this will be, um, what you call, um, finish or end up very soon. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so just for a quick refresh on uh, what we have learned on our last week class. So, um, on our last Tuesday, they will eat the, there are no class because we are actually a holiday, Sultan Johor birthday. So, um, we need to go quick and I think I will arrange a replacement class. Okay. To cover the, the class, the previous class. Okay. So this is the power diodes. Okay. And you need. The most important part here is actually you need to know the characteristic, the I versus V characteristic. So this is I is actually the current that flow from anode to cathode. And um, as you need to know that uh, this cathode only allows unidirectional current. So the current is actually unidirectional, can only flow from anode to cathode. And when this is a forward bias, which is when this die is on, uh, there will be a voltage drop, okay, so across the diode. So usually it depends on the material used to manufacture the di this diode. So it is range from 0 0.2 to 3, okay. And this is what we call VF, V forward, okay. The voltage drop is what we call V forward, okay. And then when it is reverse bias, meaning that the cathode is positive from anode, so... Uh, the diode will actually in the blocking state, okay, or forward bias. So there will be no current flow, okay. But as you can see here, uh, for real diode, so there will be some leakage current, which is maybe flow from cathode to anode, which is maybe range not very big, which is from range to micro to milliampers, or depends on the type of diode, okay. And uh, this voltage across cathode and anode, okay, uh, should not be higher than what you call VR here. Okay, so the voltage that you apply through cathode to anode should not be higher than negative VR. Okay, so if it is higher than VR, so it will 
damage this diode. Okay. And this is what you call reverse recovery and so on. And this is the type of diode that you can actually uh, get from the market. Okay, it depends. As you can see, it depends on, uh, it has a, a lot of specifications. Usually, uh, it depends on the voltage rating, the current rating, and the voltage forward, which is this is a voltage drop. And this is the time requires for the diode to recover from on to off or from it is off to on okay so this is very important when you want to design your circuit okay you need to ensure that uh, the diode can withstand the voltage uh, of the circuit okay and the rate and the price is also uh, depends some maybe maybe for example for the lower rating voltage and current so it is very cheap but if the voltage rating and current is very big so usually for example this one SD453, so this can up to 100 ringgit, okay? And we classify the diode into what we call the line frequency, fast recovery, and a special diode, what we call the short key diode, okay? And this is the second component that we want to discuss, which is the thyristor. So thyristor is under what we call a semi control power device okay so this is the symbol here so the symbol is uh, looks like a diode anode and cathode but they are a third terminal here what we call gate okay so a k and also g and this gate you need to apply ig okay and this is actually the SCR, the, the physical SCR. It's actually, there is a lot of uh, what you call uh, physical for the SCR. This is what called looks like a diode. And this is actually not SCR, so this is actually a heat sink, okay? Okay. So the normal condition to turn on the SCR or the thyristor, you need these two conditions must be fulfilled. The first one, the SCR must be in forward bias, okay? Forward bias. Must be in forward bias, not forward blocking. Must be in forward bias, meaning that um, uh, V naught is much positive compared to V cathode. Okay, it's same like a diode. Okay, so this is the first condition that you need to fulfill. And then, even though this is fault bias, okay, it will not turn on until you give a IG, meaning that you need to give a triggering signal, okay, through this gate terminal. Okay, so once conducting, so this is the what you call the IV characteristic, the current versus the voltage of the SCR. So um, when it is this condition are met or fulfilled, so it will turn on and it will behave like a diode. Okay. So there will be a voltage drop, what we call a V forward, which is range from one point five. To three volts. So this is what we call a uh, V forward. Okay. So the characteristic is depends on the values of the IG. So if the value of the IG is IG one, so this is the characteristic, and this is the characteristic when uh, IG two, and the characteristic for another IG, IGN for example, and if the voltage across this anode and cathode okay, is larger than what we call V breakover, VBO is actually V uh, breakover. Okay. When the VAK is applied more than the value of VBO, it will actually 
turn on even though you give no triggering signal. Okay. So, meaning that actually your SCR will actually damage. So, please do not uh, apply voltage greater than VBO. Okay. So, when it is turned on, it will latch into a one value with a, for, with a voltage, uh, what we call the V forward. Okay. And then it will allow the current to flow unidirectional. So, from anode to cathode. Okay, when it is reverse bias, meaning that uh, reverse bias, meaning that uh, this is positive compared to the anode. Okay, so the current is actually zero. Okay, so the SCR will turn off. Okay, so there will be no current here. And actually, when your VAV, AK is much higher than VR, so it will damage uh, the SCR. So please make sure that um, the voltage across VK and VA should be uh, smaller than VR. V this one is a V reverse. Okay, so this there is a limit. This is the maximum and this is also the maximum when it is reverse bias. So please do not exceed this maximum values. Okay. So what it is called semi-control because uh, semi-control meaning that we cannot uh, control both the turn on and the turn off of the SCR. Okay. For the SCR, we can turn on the SCR by triggering signal. Okay. We trigger the signal. We give the IG into the terminal gate. So it will turn on the SCR. But to turn on the, to turn off, okay, the SCR, it is actually uh, not, cannot be done. Okay, cannot be done. So that's why the SCR we call as a semi control uh, power device. And this is the type of the thyristor. It depends on the rating and also the what we call the frequency capabilities of the SCR. Okay, so phase control SCR is more uh, have a, what we call higher voltage rating and higher current rating, but usually the frequency is um, uh, frequency is actually uh, very slow. Okay. Meaning that your time reverse recovery is B. Okay. And inverter grade, you have inverter grade, you have a light activated SCR and you have uh, the what you call triac. So triac is actually like this. You have two SCR integrated, which is uh, inverse parallel like this. Okay. So frequently used in many low power applications, such as in our home, in our home appliance, such as uh, juice maker, blenders, uh, vacuum, and so on. Okay, so we have done on uh, diode and also SCR. I hope you have uh, understand this uh, both. So diode is the uncontrolled device. We need that we cannot control the turn on and the turn off of the diode. The SCR is semi-controlled, okay? So uh, you need to uh, know or to memorize the symbol and the IV curve and so on and the characteristic of the diode and also SCR, okay? Okay, the last uh, power device that we want to discuss is what we call the controllable power switches, okay? Which is uh, transistors. So for those who have only joined uh, these sections, okay, maybe due to problem on the registration and so on. So transistors, there are two transistors. Okay, the first one is the electronics transistors used in electronic equipment. And we have what we call these power transistors. So power transistors, meaning that this one, this transistors is used in power applications. Okay. So this is controllable switch, meaning that we can turn on and turn off this power device uh, 
okay, by controlling uh, our signal input. Okay, so that's why we call controllable switches. Okay, so unlike in during your uh, electronic subjects, electronic course that you have actually took, I think uh, several semester previously. Um, I think you remember, for example, the BJT, for example, the BJT. So we have this one is the collector. This one is your emitter and this one is your base. Okay, so this is your VCE. Okay, and this is your IB. And this one is your IC. So based on this, uh, usually your lecturers will actually show the IV curve. Okay, so the IV curve will be this one. So this curve is depends on the value of the current. So meaning that this is maybe IP1. Okay, if you reduce the current, the base current, so maybe it will have this characteristic. So this one is IP2 and maybe this one is IP3. Okay. And based on uh, this IV, IV curve here, so your lecturers usually we refer that this transistor has three region of operations. Can you name the three region here? You have this region, this region, and this region. Somebody? Volunteer. Or you need to be forced. <laughs> Someone? Residual state. Sorry? Transient state, are they? Steady state. Transient state and steady state. Uh, totally wrong. Saturation. It's okay, it's okay. Off. Don't worry. Huh? Cut, cut off region, saturation region. Uh, saturation region. And then? Tadi, siapa Naim? Naim. Yeah, memang because stay already. <laughs> and okay, which one is saturation region? Mercury. Which one? The left side. The Mercury. y axis. Why? Y axis. Okay, so this one is saturation. Okay, good. And this one? Cut off. Cut off. What about the center here? Active region. Okay, good. This is what we call active region. region. Uh, active region. Or what sometimes also uh, active region and sometimes also we call linear region. Okay, good. Very good. Hey, sorry. Okay, so during your electronic classes, okay, so your lectures, uh, the transistors is actually uh, can be operated in these three regions. Saturation region, active region, and cut off. And during your electronic courses, okay, so usually the transistors will be operated as an amplifier. Okay, so you are required to design a circuit that can amplify signals. So this circuit will actually force to operate in this active region. Okay. But in power electronics, it is different. We want the transistors to operate either in saturation or cut off region. So saturation, as you can see, the current is flowing. There is a current value here. So meaning that saturation is actually on state. So the transistor is on state. Okay, and the cut off region here, as you can see, the current is always is uh, almost zero. This region, okay, the current IC is almost zero, meaning that there is no current flow. So this is what what we call the cut off. Sometimes also we call off state. Okay, so 
The transistor is operated as a switch. Sometimes it is on and sometimes it is off. We will not operate our transistors in active region. Okay. So power electronics either on or off. Okay. Why we not allow this transistor to operate in active region? Because as you can see here, this active region, as you can see, when your IP is uh, reduced, you will see that the IC will also reduce. Okay. So this actually, this active region, sometimes we can model as a, what we call a, just a variable resistance. So we, we, we can actually represent these transistors as a Variable resistant. When you increase the current, the current when you reduce the resistance, the current will increase. When you increase the resistance, okay, so the current will actually reduce. So it's actually just like as a variable resistance. So when you have a variable resistance here, so when you have a circuit, this is your load. So the current will flow here, meaning that you will have losses right because losses is always uh what we call um depends on the value of the resistor so if your resistor is in, is actually high so you will have a high losses okay we don't want high losses here because in power electronics we want the efficiency to be very high so that's why we always want uh, the transistor to be always in as a switch okay so why as a switch because um why as a switch eh? uh oh, i want to change the color okay so when it is turned on okay this switch is turned on as you can see the current is flowing but the voltage is zero so the power losses is zero, right? When it is switched off, okay, the current will be zero. This we have uh, some voltage is blocking. So still, the power losses during off state is also zero. So that's why we always want our transistor to operate in as a switch because there will be no power losses in the circuit. Okay, so uh, the transistors that we will actually discuss um, is uh, what we call the BJT. Uh, we have the MOSFET um, and then IGBT and GTO. Okay, so GTO is not great teacher on Izuka. It's actually gate turn off thyristor. Okay. So this is the BJT and I hope you can memorize the symbol here and um, the terminal, the location of the voltage, the important voltage and so on. So as you can see, this is IC versus DC. And this is what called uh, IV, okay, IV characteristic. And it is have a PNP and also NPN. So I think you have already know this PJT. And the rating of the BJT here is um, is not more than one kilovolt, and the current that flow that the capability. Okay, actually this BJT is, has a lot of BJTs uh, depending on the manufacturers. Okay, but usually mostly uh, this BJT uh, rating is not very high, so you cannot find the BJT that has a voltage rating higher than one kilovolt and the current flow is uh, lot is less than 400 ampere so what this actually means so i just want to highlight because i have already highlight again and again so because it's very important okay bce is actually this one this is the block this is actually the this circuit is actually uh, the power circuit right now here so you are connected with a high voltage, for example, maybe 5K, 5 kilovolt. So this is actually the high power, high power system. And this one is actually what you call control signal. So this control signal comes from the microelectronics, your microprocessor and so on. So your microprocessor will give the signal, 
whether it is turned on or turned off. Okay, but for this side, this VC, this C and E is actually connected to a power circuit. Okay, so this E here meaning that this is the V blocking. So what is the rating of the V blocking? Okay, while the current here is the current that maximum current that can flow during the turn on of this SCR, uh, sorry, this uh, PJT. Okay, so if your application, the current flowing higher than 400, then you cannot use PJT. Okay. And the switching frequency, it is because we are using it as a switch on, off, and off. Uh, so the switching frequency also will be uh, is actually very important parameters in power electronics. Okay, just to remember, just to 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 make you remember that for power electronics, the power rating and the frequency rating is very important. Okay, the power rating, which is the based on the voltage and current, and the frequency capability is very important in power electronics. Okay, so the switching frequency is uh, not very high, only five kilohertz. And when it is on state, when it is turned on, uh, there will be some small voltage drop, which is depends on the materials used to manufacture this PKT. So it depends on two to three volts. Okay. Uh, one very important uh, information about this this BJT is that uh, actually the drive circuit is very complex. So what is the drive circuit? Drive circuit here is actually this uh, the circuit. Okay, so actually um, this is your BJT. Okay, so this is what I call the driver circuit. So the driver circuit is actually the just electronic circuit. Okay, that connect your power circuit this is power circuit we consider as a power circuit and then this is your computer so computer where you uh, uh, do the programming okay uh, you control you design the control signal okay when it is turned on when this BJT must be turned off so usually we are using con computer and then this computer is directly connected to the driver circuit okay we will look at this driver circuit after this. Okay, what is actually driver circuit is all about. So actually, in um, this is an interface between power circuit and your computer. Okay, so to design this power circuit for BJT is very complex. So that is the problem with this BJT, and that's why BJT is not very popular in power electronics. Okay, uh, not popular. Because of the complex driver circuit. Okay, so this is uh, I think you don't have to this uh, to know this. This is uh, what called the Darlington pair. So this is just to use to uh, to increase the the gain because uh, we know that the IC here is actually depends on the beta here. Okay. So, but it's not very important. Okay, the second um, one is the what you call the MOSFET. So, the MOSFET is the metal oxide silicon field effect transistor or MOSFET. And the important part that you need to know is actually uh, the symbol here and also the terminal. So, you have drain. You have source and gate. Okay, so drain and source is connected to power circuit. Okay, while gate terminal is actually connected to uh, your control circuit. Okay, and this is the IV characteristic of MOSFET. So ID versus VDS. 
So unlike BJT, so as you can see for the BJTs here, banyak sangat conteng. The BJT here, as you can see, is controlled by the current. Okay, the characteristic of the BJT is controlled by IB. So if you increase the IB, then you have a different characteristic. But for the MOSFET, as you can see here, the characteristic is depends on the VGS, the voltage across grid and source. Okay. And you have uh, N channel and also P channel. So N channel, the arrow is going into the, uh, the gate. While the P channel, the, as you can see, the arrow is going out from the key. Okay. So since this device is the controlled by the VGS, so this device is sometimes also called as a voltage control device. Okay. So the rating is, uh, as you can see here, is not very high. So you cannot use MOSFET in high power application the voltage blocking is very small it can uh, it can it cannot sustain more than 500 volt the current is also uh, 300 amperes and lower okay so it cannot be used in high power high voltage and high current applications okay but the advantage of this mosfet is that the frequency switching is can up to is actually can uh, be can uh, actually available more than 100 kilohertz. It can be up to 100 megahertz. You can find the market that MOSFET that can switch at very high, for example, 1 megahertz, 100 megahertz, and so on. So that is the advantage of MOSFET. Okay. So even though the power application is uh, cannot be used in a high power application, but the switching frequency is very high. Okay. So that is the advantage of uh, this MOSFET, and also uh, most the another advantage of MOSFET is that first one, the gate driver is very simple. Why simple? Because to turn on BGS need to be around 15 volt and to turn off the vgs is must be set as a zero so very simple okay to turn on you need to apply vgs equals to 15 volt to turn off just zero meaning that this signal you just apply a square so from zero to 15 volt okay so you can actually turn on and off this So this signal, 15 volt. So what happened at this? Uh, okay, so for example, a very simple circuit, you connected with uh, maybe 50 volt here. Okay, so when you tap a voltmeter here, positive and negative, and then you give a signal on, off, on, off. So what is the uh, oscilloscope measurement from when you tap positive and negative here? So actually the same you will have the same waveform but it's actually we actually give you a value of from 0 to 50 volt because of the power because of the voltage supply here so when it is turned off so you will see that uh, the voltage is actually zero okay and so on So this is uh, another uh, discussion about the MOSFET, okay? So actually the MOSFET has the limitation in high power application, okay? Because of the, what we call the internal resistance, which is what we call RDS, okay? So this one, for example, this one is uh, N channel, this is drain, this is source. 
Okay. So actually when it is turned on, okay, when it is turned on should be short circuit, but it at, in practical, it is actually it has an internal resistance. This is what we call the, in, the resistance between drain and source during turn on. So that's why we call RDS on. So this internal resistance is very high. Okay, so that's why when it is turned on, there will be a very high power losses here. So that's uh, so that's why we this MOSFET is not recommended in high power application. Okay, but it is useful in application that uh, requires a very high switching frequency. And this is the, what we call uh, the variant of the MOSFET. You can have the IRFZ48. So this is the rating and so on, okay? So this is R on is actually uh, refer to the RDS on, okay? So depending on your applications, so you need to select uh, what we call uh, suitable MOSFET based on your circuit. Time is it still eleven forty? Any question? Okay, so if there is no question, then we proceed um, with the IGBT. So IGBT, so uh, you need to memorize the terminal and also the symbol. So you have a collector, you have the emitter, and you have gate. So looks like very familiar. You have collector and then you have emitter. Looks like BJT, right? But for the base here, the terminal gate here is actually gate, not a base, not B. So... What can you say here is actually this IGBT is actually uh, come out from the what we call the mix of BJT and MOSFET. Meaning that this BJT and MOSFET are married together and then they have uh, offspring what we call IGBT. So sometimes uh, we we uh, we create or uh, we we make a joke uh, with this IGBT. So as you can see, the name IGBT is uh, very similar to what we call right now uh, in our country the issue of LGBT. Okay, lesbian, gay, and apa? What we call uh, bisexual. Uh, Transsexual, I don't know. Okay, LGBT, right? <laughs> so, and this parent here, BJT and MOSFET, but we don't know which one is male and which one is female. <laughs> so, the marriage from BJT and MOSFET uh, will give you IGBT. Okay, so this IGBT is come from this uh, mix of BJT and MOSFET. So IGBT uh, has actually uh, inherited uh, the advantage of BJT and the advantage of MOSFET. Okay, so it is a combination of MOSFET and BJT characteristic. So um, it has, for example, for the gate drive, because we know the MOSFET has a very simple gate driver. So, uh, this IGBT has a characteristic of the gate drive of the MOSFET. So, very easy to turn on and off. Okay. And, but the MOSFET, as you can see here, the MOSFET is, has a limitation where your RDS on is very high. Okay. So, you have high losses here. Okay. But BJT, in other hand, in, uh, has a very low, or not stated here, 
as a very low power losses. So what is IGBT do is actually inherit the losses. So the losses will come from the VJT uh, genetic. Okay. So for the gate drive, it use MOSFET. And for the losses, it use BJT. So both are combined. So this IGBT can be regarded as a very, uh, what you call, uh, recommended in most power electronic applications. Because my, during my PhD work also, I'm using IGBT because it's very simple, uh, easy to, to, to turn on and off, very easy. So, dia tak ada banyak tray weight dan sebagainya lah. Okay. So, it can be used in a high power application, medium and low power application. No problem at all. And as you can see, this is the IV. Yes, IV characteristic. Uh, so, as you can see, it is controlled by the voltage across V, G and E. So, this is what we call uh, this IGBT is also voltage control device. Okay. Same like a MOSFET. And the rating, as you can see here, is um, quite high. Uh, you can get it. Uh, the rating is around maybe 3.3 kilovolt. The current can be also very high. Okay. And the latest uh, technology is uh, we call high voltage IBGT can be obtained uh, in range of 4.5 kilovolt, 1.2 kilo amperes. And the switching frequency is also very high. Okay. And typical application for this IGBT, as you can see, is, uh, can be from 20 kilohertz to 50 kilohertz. So I can say that this IGBT is actually in the middle, okay, in the middle range of the power electronic device. So this is the example of a commercial IGBT that you can find. And this is a GTO. I don't want to discuss uh, this I GTO because it's actually, as you can see, the it's actually similar to the uh, SCR, but the difference is that uh, this GTO is controllable, meaning that you can turn on and turn off this thyristor. Okay, so the symbol is also uh, not very much different with the SCR, and, uh, but the difference is actually on this. You have the two arrow here, meaning that this is GTO. It can be turned on, it can be turned off. Okay. Uh, and as you can see here, um, this, uh, this GTO is actually have a very high power, high voltage and high current rating. Okay. And the frequency is always uh, not uh, larger than 2 kilohertz. They punya rating. Okay. But this, this, this GTO is actually not very popular. And then we have also IGCT. Uh, MCT and okay, so this is um, the I the switch idealized characteristic. So you need to remember this, okay? So this is IB characteristic for the diode. As you can see, this diode when it is fault bias, so the voltage forward is zero, so it will allow the current to be flow in unidirectional, and this is during, so this is fault bias or sometimes we call on. And this is the state of off state. So it will, as you can see, it will not allow current to flow. Okay. And this is for the SCR. So the current versus voltage. This is on state. Okay. This is during the blocking forward blocking so meaning that it is uh, still in off position okay unless you give a triggering signal then when you give triggering signal you give this triggering signal it will from off to turn on okay so off to turn on 
So it will remain in the forward blocking until you give a triggering signal. Then it will turn on. Okay. And you have also this one. This is what you call off. Okay. So for the SCR, we have two conditions of off. The first one when it is uh, in forward direction, in the forward bias, but there is no signal. So this is what we call uh, forward blocking. And then the second one is the uh, reverse blocking. Okay. And as you can see right now, this is the BJT. So this is BJT. So this is a controllable, meaning that you can, as you can see the arrow here, it is can be either turned on or you can also make it off. Okay. The same with the MOSFET. Okay. You can either turn on or you can either make it turn off. Okay. So IGBT also same. So you can either on and off, but as you can see, there is a uh, characteristic where it is in the reverse direction here, reverse blocking. So this one we call reverse blocking. Okay, and then this is the classification of um, different power device depending on the power rating and also the frequency switching. So power rating and frequency rating is very important in power electronics. So as you can see, the tire resistor is uh, more towards on high power application, but uh, low frequency switching. This is and MOSFET, as you can see here, is more suitable for low power application, but high switching frequency. So MOSFET, low power, high switching frequency, while thyristor is high power. low switching frequency. While GTO, IGCT, and IGBT, as you can see here, is in the middle, okay? So this is uh, what I call applications. Okay, depending on the power device. So usually uh, HBDC, we know that our frequency is 50 Hertz. So usually um, power device that uh, suitable for HBDC is a thyristor and also diode. Okay, and MOSFET is suitable for uh, communication systems and so on, microwave and so on. Okay. And for the air conditioner, usually in the middle power, Okay, so this one is also not very important for you. Okay, so, okay. So further development in power device. So actually power electronics uh, technology is uh, totally depends on the uh, manufacturing technology. Meaning that, uh, as you can see, without the, uh, the, 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 find, the finding of the transistors, there will be no power electronics. So power electronics is actually originated or actually the development of power electronics, the progress is depends on the materials technologies. Okay. So right now, what we have found that uh, from the material technology, they, they come out with a new combination of uh, materials such as uh, silicon carbide and gallium nitride. So these two is called uh, what you call the white band gap materials. So right now, maybe uh, you have already uh, know about what you call uh, the handphone charger, right? Handphone charger, what you call sometimes you call gun, gun supercharger for your handphone. Pernah dengar tak? Gun. 
Tak pernah lah tu. Ha? Tak pernah. Tak pernah. Pernah. Tak. Charger Realme. Ah yeah, sometimes Realme, Xiaomi, they are more more they are right now go towards gun charger. G A N gun charger. Okay. So gun charger is actually meaning that uh, the transistors, the transistors is actually uh, manufactured based on these materials, gallium nitride ataupun gun. Dia ada adik-adik layer iaitu SIC ni lah, silicon carbide. But the most popular right now uh, that currently commercialized is what we call gallium nitride, GAN. Okay, ha, itulah kalau you pergi tengok on the Xiaomi ke atau sebagainya ataupun you pergi kepada gadget RX, apa? RX class eh? RX class gadget or you go to senang cerita lah. For example, for me, for technology information, I always go to this uh, amans.my kan? Amans.my or sometimes I also go to soya cincau. Soya cincau.com to know about the latest develop, latest progress in technology in handphone technology camera uh, computers and so on i always go to these two websites okay so actually this gun charger is actually uh, entering the malaysia so you can purchase this gun i think maybe around 100 ringgit malaysia and then this gun is actually has a capability to uh, Supercharge your battery handphone. Okay. Why? Because uh, this uh, technology of the materials used for the transistor, it makes the charger to have a uh, high current rating and high voltage rating. Okay. So that make your charger become faster. Because usually the charger is depends on the current that you can supply to the battery. Okay, so the rate of the charge is depends on how large the current can flow through the battery. So to get the current higher, so meaning that you need a transistor that capable uh, to actually uh, make the current flow very high. Okay, so masa dia turn on kan? Okay, so this one lah. Uh, as you can see, this the... the Three diagram. This is what we call silicon. So actually, before this silicon carbide and gallium nitride technology, so most of our transistors, diode, and so SCR is based on silicon. Okay, but in the future, uh, all this uh, silicon will be all this diode, transistor, and transistor will be manufactured based on these two materials, which is silicon carbide and gallium. Nitride. Okay, what is the advantage? As you can, I have explained earlier, it, it actually increases the capability of current and also the voltage. Okay, so this is the silicon limit. Okay, so this is the silicon limit. So when we are using silicon kappa and gallium nitride, so we can increase the limit, okay, the power limit, and also the frequency switching limitations. So that is the advantage of using uh, silicon carbide and also gallium nitride technologies. Okay, so this is the transistors. I think uh, this is the transistors uh, MOSFET that actually based on silicon carbide. And this is the uh, diode uh, based on the silicon carbide. That's why I uh, I said earlier that power electronics application is everywhere in our life. Okay, usually uh, banyak berkaitan dengan uh, on the power side lah, on the power input and voltage regulation and so on. UPS, uh, entry, uh, macam entry power supply kan. Okay, I think that's all. Okay, so we have finished on this power device. So next week we'll go on um, the next subtopic in the chapter one, still in chapter one, which is I think maybe on the snubbers and also the gate drive. 
Okay. So I think that's all. Any questions? Question, doctor. Okay. So okay. if there is no question, then um, then we can dismiss this class. And just to remember to you that you need to um form a group. Okay. So I will uh, maybe next week or maybe after next week I will post the first assignment. So the first assignment. You need to use uh, either MATLAB or PSPICE, but I think it's better to use MATLAB lah, because for our electronics, usually for the for, for the power tonic, it's actually usually better to use MATLAB, okay? So MATLAB, uh, so please download the MATLAB and so on. So you can always, you can use uh, the, the MATLAB from UTM, okay? But you need to always uh, log in to your ID to use the software. Otherwise, you can also um, buy it from the Shopee, from Shopee or Lazada. But I think Shopee lah. Okay, Shopee, you can find it uh, a lot of softwares there. Um, the crack, the crack version and so on. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you.